Okay, so welcome to the Outpost game mode for Battlefield 5. This is just going to be an unscripted commentary today, and I'm going to work my way through how this game mode works and what it does differently to other game modes, give you some of my thoughts and opinions, and mainly the gameplay is just going to focus here on the Mercury map, which has definitely gone straight up the places to one of my favourite maps in Battlefield 5 at the moment. The other map that is supported is, uh, is Arras, which is one of the base game maps. And uh, that one has four different outposts that you can capture. And here on Mercury, you get five different outposts. But interestingly, the area that you can play in on Arras is bigger than the one on Mercury, yet it's got less capture points. So it does offer uh, certainly a different play style to, uh, to this map. But of the two, I think this one is the one, the one that's better suited for it. And um, the game mode is not... 100% the same as the explanations that I've seen in certain blogs and and information drops that DICE have put out there since we first found out that this game mode was coming to the game and that's why I sort of wanted to explain it because it's actually a lot simpler than I initially thought it was going to be. You can essentially think of it as conquest but instead of just standing on the flag and capturing it you need to go to these locations and almost build the flag but instead of building a flag you're building a radio tower and then from that radio tower, you're earning recruits. The radio tower has like these speakers on them and it just blasts propaganda onto the map in whichever faction you're playing for. So if you're playing for the Germans, you're going to hear lots of German shouting coming out of it. If you're playing for the Allies, then you're going to hear lots of Allied propaganda coming out of it. And I think the idea is that those radio towers are broadcasting the propaganda so that you gain recruits. That's at least the... Uh, the story behind it but as you can see here this is what you need to do you go up to these locations and you build the radio tower and once you've built them you'll start earning recruits and of course the more towers you have the more recruits you'll earn and uh, once I've been revived here you'll see the scoreboard at the top so I'll briefly explain that to you so there is a 100 recruit limit throughout the round and the first team to reach that limit wins the round but you'll also see the the capture point location flags up there they also have these little dots above them. Those are different stages of building the radio towers. So initially, you can just build a basic radio tower, and that will earn you, I think, one recruit over time. So I think it's like every 30 seconds or so, you get points on your scoreboard, and that will earn you one recruit. If you then level up the radio tower, it will get you two, and finally, you can level it even further and get to level three, and you'll get three recruits per radio tower that you own over a certain period of time. And obviously... The, the higher the level of each radio tower, the quicker you're going to reach that 100 score. So it's not particularly difficult to understand what you have to do, but uh, it's leveling up those, uh, those radio towers where it becomes a little bit more in-depth. But as you can see here, we'll start building this, this radio tower. If you come across an enemy radio tower, you can destroy it. You can run up to it and place a bomb on it. And then that will arm a bit like a rush MCOM and then you have to blow it up. But then you have to build your own radio tower in its place. So it's not like you can just walk up to it and suddenly it becomes yours. You have to break down the other one and uh, and then build your own. Which I think is quite interesting because it puts a huge reliance on, uh, on certain classes within Battlefield 5. I'm sure most of you know out there that... The, one of the support class combat roles. I think it's the engineer combat role, although I'm not 100% sure. I think the other one's machine gunner, and that one does more suppression. So the engineer uh, combat role for the support class, that allows you to build fortifications 50% quicker. So if you're going to be focusing a lot on these radio towers and you pretty much want to hardcore the uh, PTFO on the objectives, then you should probably be running support and maybe pick a... Uh, a light machine gun or something that's a little bit more adaptable than an MMG. There's not a huge amount of camping in this game mode, as I found. There's just a lot of attacking. And uh, and then the other, the other class, which I'm playing right now, is Medic. And that's just as important, because there are so many people around these radio towers, whether that happens to be attackers or defenders, but there are always players on the ground that need reviving. And, of course, the more people you can get building the towers at any one time the quicker those towers are going to get built. And I'd also say that the Medic having that uh, the SMLE rifle that can fire off the smoke grenades is an absolute godsend here on Outpost because you can just cover the area in smoke. That creates absolute chaos. The Maybe the attacking team or the defending team don't really know what's going on. You go in with your Tommy gun with 50 bullets in it and suddenly you can start slapping people to the ground pretty quickly. 
But uh, yeah, and the reason I say that I like this one on uh, on Mercury so much is because I can I can use the medic class and I can get from flags relatively quickly, and I can wipe out enemy players just that much faster. You'll notice a lot of the time there's a lot of other players around me as we as we move from objective to objective. There is quite a lot of zerging in this mode, I'd say. But that's not necessarily a bad thing because you've always got backup. It's just that if you don't really like the Zerg playstyle where everyone sort of groups together and runs around in groups, then you're probably really not going to like Outpost, especially here on Mercury. It's less apparent on Aras because there's more space in between the Outposts. But just in general, you're going to find a lot of clumping of enemies here. And I don't really mind that, but you might. So it's really down on onto your own preference. You can see us building the uh, the tower here. That we've obviously destroyed the uh, the other enemy the enemy's flag, and now we've upgraded it to our own. But what starts to happen is that the enemy team start coming over, and all the fortifications around the outside of the tower have been destroyed because we just blew up the tower, and that destroys all the fortifications that are nearby it. Which means we've got basically no cover whatsoever, and uh, that's why I'm just sort of popping smoke as much as I can, and then trying to help out, reviving players, picking them up so they can carry on building the tower. And even though I know there are enemies around here there's there's like <laughs> it's more important that i build the tower because that's the objective and i know there are other other friendlies on the point that will that will give me a little bit of cover and i can carry on building so you can see here we're going up to level three on this tower and we still hadn't quite got there by by the time the enemy team had come over but uh which is what makes it so fun i think especially for infantry gameplay because it's just absolutely chaotic and and when I was away in, in Los Angeles, a couple of people were saying that Battlefield 5 is very heavily infantry focused. That player just came out of nowhere, didn't he? <laughs> I remember when I was playing, that made me laugh. Uh, but yeah, um, infantry play in Battlefield 5 is, 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 is very focused on that. And that might be a detriment to the, get, to the game sometimes, but I honestly don't mind it all that much because... I'm heavily into infantry game, but I think that was an enemy tank. Yes, it was. So one of the one of the places you'll find here on Mercury is the tanks will sit there and shoot down into the town. But the reason that I like the gameplay, the infantry gameplay so much, is because it can get so chaotic. And, you know, if I'm going from point to point and getting a few kills and then arming the objective, building some fortifications, that for me is, is like a really nice gameplay loop. And the, the outpost game mode kind of accentuates that to a point where vehicles that do sort of start to engage like you can see some tanks running around and you can see transport vehicles they're not a hundred percent needed in order to make the game mode fun and because i like infantry gameplay so much that, that doesn't honestly bother me i think my my jb2 rocket there took out about six players on on the b point you can use the v1 rockets to to destroy radio towers by the way so if an enemy radio tower across the map, if you just bring up your V1 binoculars and just just slam a V1 into that, it will completely destroy it as long as you aim correctly. And of course, you're going to find a lot of players hanging around as well. So uh, if you've got any kind of attacking um, reinforcements, then you should you should probably use them. The sector artillery is good as well because it lasts a bit longer and it spreads out a little bit further too. You're not going to get as many kills and <laughs> as you would a V1 rocket. But as you can see here, look, I just come back up onto the flag and there's uh, there's plenty of players. But And I think I then arm this objective or... No, that's, that's that was a different clip from another game. Here, the uh, friendly sector artillery comes in, which gives us more cover. For, uh, for what's happening. I think I end up getting killed here, but what's interesting is I don't think the enemy team actually get the outpost back. No, look, you can see here that this guy is, he's trying to disarm look, and he gets killed, so he so he, uh, he couldn't disarm our uh, so he couldn't arm the bomb on it, and I think we would end up dis disarming it or something like that, but uh, yeah, overall, I, I, I really quite like the game mode. I, I thought it was going to be a little bit more in-depth. When I was reading some of the, the blog articles that previously come out for Outpost, supposedly there was going to be like a, a preparation phase where you would build up your radio towers and you would add a load of fortification defences around them. And then uh, at the same time, you would have like enemy players would try and come along and, and infiltrate what you were doing and maybe drop some explosives and try and damage what you were doing. And then the idea that I got is that the game mode would sort of stop halfway through and then it would go into elimination phase, which the entire point was 
to just go to the enemy team's radio towers and try and take them down. So it was almost like an attack and attack defend, kind of like capture the flag, where both teams are trying to do the same thing to each other's bases and stuff like that. But it doesn't appear that that's the, the final version that DICE went with, and they went with more of a, a conquest structure. But I've, but I've got to say that if this was normal conquest in Battlefield 5, where you had to sort of like build up a radio tower in order to own that objective and then if you leveled up the radio tower it would make that objective more influential within the scoring of the game i think that might be quite cool i mean obviously here we're looking at a heavily infantryfied version of the mode and there's not a lot going on with like vehicles and stuff like that but then again these radio towers are very very close together so they're always going to be infantry focused but if these towers were spread out, let's say, on something like a map like Twisted Steel, and there were five of them, and they were dotted around, and you've got a good 200 meters in between each of them, I really do think that vehicles, they could they could play quite a, quite a big impact on that, because if a vehicle is sort of nearby one of these radio towers, you're going to find it much more difficult to sort of infiltrate, take down what's already there, because, of course, you've got to blow the thing up, and the vehicle's going to notice when that alarm goes off. And I think that that kind of setup for normal conquest could be really, really fun. And I don't know, I've got this like sneaky suspicion that DICE might be using this as like a, a test of how they can maybe slightly change the conquest rule set in order to make it more engaging. And it also means you don't just have to stand on flags in order to capture them. You're always doing something. You're using the building tool, the fortifications, which I think is one of the best additions to Battlefield 5 anyway. It's sort of like reverse destruction, so... Overall, I think DICE has done a really good job with this game mode. It's very attacking-minded, and, you know, that's one of the elements that I'm not 100% sure on. I think there might need to be some way of sort of incentivizing defending a little bit more, but Battlefield has sort of transformed over the last 8 to 10 years, and it's gone from being a mode where a lot of people... a game where a lot of people like to defend into something where a lot of people like to attack all the time. So if this is just feeding into that, then, you know what... Just keep going, Dice. It's, it's absolutely fine. I think it's a great game mode. I really, really enjoyed it. And I think we actually won this round as well. So uh, so that's pretty good. But there you are. That's the outpost mode for Battlefield 5. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I hope you now understand the mode a little bit more. And when you get home later today, you should definitely jump in and give it a go. But thank you very much for watching today. My name is Westy, and until next time, I messed up that outro. I'm just going to leave it in. <laughs> See you guys in the next video.